Welcome back to It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Thanks for tuning in, watching, and listening, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Kevin, sir, my sweet baby boy, what's on the docket today? Today we are going to be talking about two things. Oh. Uh, MSRP is gone. We're going to talk about that. On where did top it of, go? Right? Where'd you it's put it? It's lost. You, you left my MSRP? It's hiding in a dryer. <laughs> if you're Zach Latham, you'll get that. Um, okay, we're also going to be talking about Popper. Well, I'm not, and I don't understand. <laughs> oh, I do. You, Never mind. You know that story. Uh, anyway, yeah. uh, these episodes, as always, guys, are sponsored by our good friends over at Cardsphere.com, the best place online to buy, sell, and trade Magic cards. They just updated, uh, as they have been doing fairly regularly, their draft.cardsphere.com URL. Uh, so if you're interested in pra practice drafting, they just added Lorwin, which Lorwin. I think is really interesting. Uh, Shout I don't out to know if those that's in, of you who are still drafting Lorwin. Yeah, Wake I don't up, know if that is in preparation for like a flashback draft online or something like that. I have no oh, clue. Oh, that'd be tight. Um, but if that is the case, then props to Cardsphere for thinking ahead on that one. They also added a rating system, so you can like sort cards by like a limited rating and make sure that you're kind of on the right track. It's really nice. Uh, but, Very crisp, folks. Uh, we Very crisp. also yes, have yes, our February yes. giveaway going <gasps> on right now. Ooh, we released it yesterday, and we've already got a Valentine's. butt ton of you people. Uh, I'm saying butt ton because I can't say a bad word. Uh, but we've got a I lot of people. Butt's not a bad word. Butt's not. Don't judge a butt by how many cover. How um, many T's is it at? Eight. Is, is it the two T butt? No, That's a bad word, baby. <laughs> uh, we do have our February giveaway going on right now. Enter uh, by subscribing to our channel and commenting on any video. It does not matter which with hashtag February giveaway. You can leave a nice comment if you would like as well. And you will be entered to win uh, mm -hmm. a guild kit from Ravnica Allegiance of your choice. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. Can you say um, enter to win one more time? Enter to win. Ba -da -ba -da! <laughs> Enter to win a Ravnica Allegiance Guild kit of your choice. I feel weird. Right. I'm done. Uh, anyway, the winner will be chosen on my birthday, February 26th. Oh, gross. Cancel the giveaway. Shameless plug on my birthday. nothing to do with this. That's fair. Uh, I'm actually going to be out of town on that day. Ugh. I don't plan well. Uh, but it is what it is. So uh, that's illegal. I'm pretty sure. I don't think you'd be out of town on your birthday. Ah, uh, well. Uh, nine one one. Let's jump right in. Get ourselves acclimated with a random card of the day. Clearly, we're gonna have a great episode All today. Right. Red eyes, black dragon. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> we have dwarven warriors. This is an alpha card. Yeah. Uh, so two and a red for a one one. <laughs> Tap to make a creature of power no greater than two unblockable until end of turn other cards may be used to increase target creatures power beyond two after defense is chosen i love the the oracle text on yep. these cards so great yep so this is back in the day when they had to explain <laughs> some of the rules on the cards themselves they still printed things like not even in italics just oh, like no. hey just... you can do stuff to the power yeah after you do this yeah yeah the that. like updated text is tap target creature with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. <laughs> that is the actual what this actually means. Yeah, for anybody right. that didn't pick In, up like, on that. modern magic. Yeah, you know. Um. So, how do we feel about dwarven warriors? Uh, um. So okay, in the right deck, like in a red deck, wins, which this would go in. It's like pretty good to be able to make certain things unblockable. Uh, only because it doesn't like. You're just trying to get in a bunch of damage really early. What I don't like about this is it is a three drop. That's yeah. a really bad turn to take off to play a one one that next turn might make like a two power creature unblockable. Right. So <laughs> this is a card that is in just about every limited format in some way. I think there's like But they've a gotten better, right? Ish. There's like a two drop that does this, if I'm not mistaken. That's also like, a one yes. One. So they've gotten better in that sense, but they don't really ever help those decks out. Like the best one I think we've gotten was the one drop from Amonkhet that like taps, gives something oh, haste yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever it is. Um, we just found that like this effect isn't awesome. It's not as impactful as no. you'd like it to be. Never. Um, and this is like a limited card. It's the only- Oh. 
Good Only Lord, Only yes. play this Though game. it is legal and vintage for any of you brewers out there. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, I'll, <laughs> I'll take a Dwarven Warrior Stout, please. A good <laughs> zero and eight in my league. Thanks. Worth um, it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so n- not, not great. Fan. Do I would say um, you can use this with Fire Breathing, which was around at this time. That's true. Um, tap, give something unblockable, and then pump up your Fire Breathing. Like, I'm pretty sure... Uh, Dragon Whelp or mm, Dragon yeah. Egg, one of those cards, whichever one. Whelp, I is believe. like a 2-2. Two, two yeah, I With think so. classic fire breathing, plus one, plus one. Yeah, yeah. Plus one, plus zero. That's what I said. What'd I say? Plus, plus one, plus one. Plus one. one. <laughs> yeah, pay attention. Uh, Adding's hard. <laughs> plus one, plus, plus, plus some. Plus, plus one, plus some. Duh. <laughs> so... This is uh, a great episode already. Yeah. But anyway, this card is not good. That's the takeaway. <laughs> it's, it's not. Like, this is fine, I think, filler in a limited deck. But, like, yeah, it's this is best filler, though. This isn't the effect you want to find. Nope. Really ever. I agree. Not very exciting. Although, um, with fire breathing, it's pretty good tandem, but it's still just get more fire breathers in your I was going to say, get fire breathing first before you pick this card. Oh, um, uh, for Sheezy. So, okay, like I said, there are two things on the docket today. First is uh, Wizards announced on February 18th that we no longer will have MSRP uh, when it comes to War of the Spark. Yeah. uh, um, And future sets as well. This just in from the, huh, news of the day. (laughs) Uh, Why? why? (laughs) (laughs) This just seems really weird. Yeah. Um, So their exact words, kind of at the end, like their reasoning, we'll say, yeah. As quote from Blake Rasmussen, not to call you out, Blake Rasmussen. You just wrote the article, buddy. That's not your fault. Right. Or is it? It might be. Blake. It's um, all your decision. Quoting Blake, though, we believe the elimination of MSRP will simply help us communicate better to our players and the places where these players shop. Period. Stop. End quote. Um, <laughs> here's the thing, though. <laughs> if you're looking for ter- efficient communication... Saying the same thing <laughs> to everybody one time yeah, seems pretty good. Well, here's the, the key is to have good communication, you have to communicate something. Well, right. And there isn't anything anymore. So right, like, that's the thing. It's the... like, we're going to communicate better how much this stuff costs. <laughs> By like, not telling you how much it costs. You mean like an MSRP, right, Blake? <laughs> no, 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 wait, wait. <laughs> exactly not like that. It's different. We're going to communicate differently and better where you shop. Yeah. How, though, Blake? By telling you how much it is. But sometimes. <laughs> but not actually. <laughs> well, okay. So here's the thing. And we were talking about this before we started this episode. Like... I don't see this actually affecting anything all that much other than wizards being able to say, well, it's not on us. Sure. And so the reason I say that, and again, we kind of went in and talked a little bit about this, is that right, 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 right. The, the card stores, whoever's selling the product, still has to pay a certain amount for the product. So yeah. you're not going to see the price dip super low or anything like that. Not, Dreamland's not going to happen. Sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, of course not. Um, this, there's no. no way that that happens. But... In a area where there is probably going to be multiple card stores, things like that, more populated areas, it's probably still going to be about the same because everybody has to stay competitive. That yeah. was your point. It's economics. Yeah. A little bit. And it's just free market economics. That's how it works. Right. Um, on the like only thing that I foresee being maybe an issue is like for a place where there is very little population and yeah. maybe only one card store, that card sco- store excuse me, gets to kind of run the show. And right. charge whatever they want. Granted, I guess technically they could have done that anyway, but like now it's just like, here, have a free pass. Like, you can kind of do whatever at this point yeah. because there's no competition <laughs> and there's no MSRP yeah. for you to be like, for your user, for your, your customer base to be like, well, this is an overcharge. Well, no, it's not because there's no MSRP. Right. It's <laughs> like, it's like you can't, <laughs> it, you can't go tell on, on daddy now because daddy yeah. just left. Uh, Dad checked out. Yeah, he went to the grocery store for cigarettes, and you will never see him again. Sorry if this hits too close to home for anybody. <laughs> yeah, we might want to swerve. <laughs> anyway, um, this doesn't. I. It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't. There's. It's I don't know enough so about stupid. about economics really to to yeah, talk about fair. why they would do this, or to give you an example of another company that's maybe doesn't have an MSRP. Yeah. I did have a thought of, um, well. <laughs> I guess 
gas stations kind of do this with gas, but no, they don't because no. there's like a federal minimum, maximum, and yeah. other stuff that they set for gas and a gas tax, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. So I don't, I don't really have off the top of my head a good example. Some Excuse people me. are attributing this to like the vastly ra high range of prices that we see with like master sets and stuff like that, but like it's a master set. Of course, the value is going to be all over the place. Some people are taking this as okay. Well, now we're definitely going to get more master sets. And I was like, I don't know that that was in question anyway. Well, um, I mean, maybe, but like, I think I don't know. Ultimate Masters went, uh, though it was super expensive. It went okay. Yeah, like it was I mean, a good set. Pretty good. Um, yeah. I don't really know why people were like, well, Masters is done. Not now. Maybe with <sighs> iconic Masters, yeah, but like sure i i think we're kind of past that point now so i just i don't know it just seems really weird that's yeah. all i don't really have a comprehensive review of this i just want you to know that it's stupid uh yeah um, it is stupid wizards is, is dumb let's move on to something that's not stupid and interesting and interesting yeah <laughs> okay uh, popper time guys so okay i do want to yeah, preface da, 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 da. this <laughs> yeah <laughs> i do want to preface this uh our last two episodes have been dedicated to format overviews like oh, updates on formats yeah we did uh modern first if i'm not mistaken then correct. we did standard correct uh we had a request from someone on youtube who actually would like us to do a popper review and so we oh. thought you know what for that one person that's Michelle. all the motivation we need baby so here we are. Um, <laughs> I, I channeled my inner you on that one, Will. That's a hundred percent something you, you would say. I loved it. Uh, okay, oh, so a boy. Popper format. For anybody that doesn't know what the popper format is, Lost common points. cards only. That's it. Yeah. There is a ban list. Mm -hmm. uh, there are only I don't know how many cards are on it, but there are some on it. Some. There are some I cards might, on the ban know. list. Um, Should we look? Nah, it's not that important. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. All right, talk about <laughs> Yeah, yourselves. look. Uh, so the popper format has recently has gotten a lot more traction because uh, people like The Professor, who is one of the biggest Magic YouTubers, if not the biggest still, uh, is an advocate for the popper format over time. It's gained a little bit of traction at like popular events, things like that. And mm -hmm. so we're actually seeing it played at tournament like high level tournament events which is great yep. i'm stoked by that it's a great way to play a very competitive format and a very fun format uh for not much money right yeah uh, what you're going to see is a lot of these decks I, I very few popper decks you can make will ever breach like 80 bucks oh yeah 100 bucks uh it, it's gone up a little bit recently but again that's basically due to the surge in player base because now more people are playing it and actually right. i will say some prices uh have kind of leveled out things like gush have kind of taken a turn down now it's still a couple bucks mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken but it's not <clears throat> the like five to ten dollar card right. that it spiked to for a short time so Really quickly, we're going to go over, as we did with the other formats, we have uh, aggro control and combo decks. Mm -hmm. Aggro sitting at a whopping 78%. Not surprising. No, not at all. Um, um, with a lot of common uh, yeah. rarity cards, the best ones are going to be ones that just hit you in the face because yep. you don't have any exciting spells, really. Right? Yeah, you don't have the high, high impact spells. Yeah. Everything's kind of incremental, and so right. the sooner you can win the game, the better. Aggro seems like the way to do that. Correct. Uh, so then we have control sitting at 20%. Uh, half of that is only one deck, which we will talk about in just a minute. Yep. Uh, and then combo is 3% with a singular deck. <laughs> Tireless which, Tribe. Yeah, it's the Tireless Tribe combo where you just like power it up, switch its power and toughness, and then swing in. I'm not going to talk at length about this deck. It's a fun deck. Definitely try it out, but not all that exciting, I will say. No. Uh, I mean, it's a silly deck. It's fun, uh, but it's pretty fancy. easy to beat up. <laughs> Just kill the tireless tribe. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, talking about the top three decks in the format right now, uh, we do have Boros Aggro sitting at 22%, which is a huge mar That's, margin. Yeah. Kind of the biggest we've probably ever seen for yeah, Popper. Yeah, that's or, well, not, huge. Excuse me, for any, for any deck. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, but it is a really, really sweet deck. Uh, it's, I mean, it is an aggro deck. At its heart, it's trying to deal a bunch of damage very, very quickly. Yep. But it has incremental value in it. Uh, it bounces a lot of its own spells, mm -hmm. which is really sweet. Uh, and it draws cards using, like, Thraven Inspector Clue tokens. Uh, it also has Alchemist Vile. 
So every time you bounce it, you play it again, you draw a card. Uh, it's a really, really sweet deck. I do like this. There's a lot of synergy to it. Uh, it also does have things like Journey to Nowhere, which is good removal for this deck, because if a bigger threat comes along, you can just bounce it and then yep. turn it back. It's nice. Uh, so lots of really, really sweet stuff. A lot of flashback. Uh, and then a little bit of Metalcraft with Galvanic Blast. Uh, it does run uh, some of the artifact lands, Great Furnace and Ancient Din. Yeah, it just seems kind of free, right? I yeah, mean, two it damage is. for one 100%. is fine. Exactly. Uh, but four damage for one is great. Uh, delicious. Uh, so uh, definitely a really sweet deck, uh, and obviously the deck to be in right now, uh, according uh, to the numbers so. at the very least. Yeah. Uh, but it is really, really sweet. Definitely would suggest checking this one out. Uh, then we have, if I'm not mistaken, Blue Black Delver. Uh, correct, sir. Uh, sitting at, I think it was like, was it 19%? I that might be wrong. Right uh, yes, 19%. Yeah. Um, so Delver decks are ever popular in Popper uh, because Delver's Delver a monster. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. obviously yeah. Black for Gurmag Angler, uh, and this is just a spells-heavy deck, let me yeah. tell you. Like any... any um, uh, Delver deck, you have a lot of spells that will control or remove threats uh, until you can flip your Delver on turn two or three, whatever you need to do, and then just keep beating face. Yep. Uh, running Grubbag Angler just makes this, it just makes perfect sense. I mean, you're, you're going to be using all of these instants and sorceries to get to your Delver and to clear the board for your Delver, so you're going to have a full yard. So why not delve out a 5-5 five, five zombie fish? Agreed. It makes sense. Grubbag yeah, Angler yeah. is played in so many formats now, just kind of it's you know, so good. 25 five, cents five too still. Like, oh, yeah. Think about that. It's played from modern to legacy. Pop oh, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's been standard. reprinted like a lot. Be that as it may, it's printed. It's, Always it's at played common, in, though. Yeah, it's played a bunch of places. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know it's a I mean? really popular card. I know foil versions are probably kind of weirdly up there. Um, it might be, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, this does feature the foil gush combo that everybody freaks out about that is good but yeah go explain this because this I'm was actually okay oh okay yeah i do okay so the idea being uh you tap your two islands uh you play gush by returning to the two islands you just tapped to your hand and then you draw two cards then uh you can discard an island and another card rather than paying this spell's mana cost that's what mm -hmm. foil that's the gimmick behind foil sure. and so now that you just bounce lands back to your hand it's like a free counter, basically. Every it's time. like a counter that gives you two. Cards. It's like draw two cards and counter a spell for yeah. like two mana or something. Really like, for ridiculous. free. Yeah, really for free is essentially what it amounts to. Right. Um, but it's, I mean, it's really powerful. It's great value, but like, it's also not like, hey, if I do this, I just auto win. Like right. that's not how that works. It's <laughs> good. Do yeah. not get me wrong. It is fantastic, yeah. but it's not. Yeah. It's not a game winner. No, certainly not. But let's let's talk about incremental value. Oh, okay. Right, and a a good uh, tempo play. Right. Okay. So if you th think about it like this, it's essentially turning. If you now, granted, if you have gush and foil together, mm. you have to have two cards. Really, you have to have four cards to work this out. Mm -hmm. Right. Two islands in play, gush and foil in hand. Mm -hmm. Have to. Uh, however, it turns those two islands into two extra cards mm -hmm. and a counter spell. Mm -hmm. So removal. And then one mana extra after you've gained these. Yeah. Which is in the right deck a brainstorm, a preordain. In this deck in particular. Right. But I mean, I'm sure in, yeah, mo yeah. in, mo in mono blue aggro used to be really big too. Yeah. Um, it I, still is a thing, but it's not. I mean, it's just like this without Gromag, really. <laughs> yeah, and it's you know? much more creature. It, it's you know, Ninja of the Deep Hours, that kind of right, thing. right, right, stuff like that. But that to me, like, if you use it with Brainstorm, mm -hmm. you you get to see five cards. Yeah, you know what I mean. For essentially like one mana, <laughs> two mana, we'll say. Right, two mana, sort of, but yeah. really like one mana. Yeah, that seems pretty stinking good. In a Treasure Cruise is banned in this format. Yeah, because Treasure Cruise, as we know, is stinking powerful. Uh, yeah, that's a ton of card advantage. <laughs> this isn't necessarily Treasure Cruise, because correct me if I'm wrong. Let me just Treasure Cruise is straight up draw it's, three, right? Which is, I mean, great. But this is draw two, and then if you've got the third card, go ahead and draw three. Yeah, why not? 
I mean, that's basically what it is. It's great. It's it's very very good. It's if, very good. If you but... want to talk about reasons that Probe was banned in a lot of decks, <laughs> because it thin decks. Yeah. It just was a free play, basically. Yeah. You play with 56 cards if you've got Probe in your deck, essentially. Yep. Um, it just made things run a lot more efficiently and mm -hmm. smoothly. This, to me, feels like that. It doesn't, it doesn't, because Probe is like, like you said, it's a free card, but it's a free card by itself. Like, on its own, sure. Get Probe is just a free space in your deck, is essentially sure. what it is, plus it's info on your opponent, which is good. Also, fun fact, uh, if you still like playing with Probe, good news for you, it's free and popper. Um, da, 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 you can da, still da, play it. Yeah. <laughs> How many game show references can we do? Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, this, while all of that sounds amazing, that scenario requires three cards to be present in your hand plus two islands present on the field. So, I mean, like, sure. do you see what I'm saying? Like, Get Probe, turn one, it's almost free because well, yeah. you pay two life I mean, it's, oh it's, oh god we'll say it's free it's free guys well. that's how it goes well. um so like yes this is great but it does require multiple cards to get it to the point where it's like amazing it's still good the both of these cards individually i mean you get gush it's still just a good card regardless foil yeah a very good card for popper regardless but them together obviously is going to up that value but you do have to have them together and so it's not like it's it's not get probe in the sense that it's just like a freebie uh no but that doesn't that doesn't change how impactful that is oh no you know no, no. I mean? it's just it changes how regular <laughs> that actually happens how the regularity of that actually happens i mean sure i'm not going to get into mathematics right now but let's statistic this crap out i mean it's not that that's a good sentence <laughs> It was, we have the best sentences. Uh, it's not that unheard of, though. No, I mean, not I mean, terribly. Although they only run th in this list, and I know this seems like a fairly popular list. It's three and three. It's not four and four. Right, but I mean, this could easily be four and four. Oh, yeah. Take right. out a day's. Take a day's out. is so good. It's so free. Well, yeah, but like, still, you can take out that. Take out yeah. Spell Pierce. Spell Pierce, actually. Oh, that kind of makes sense. Um, Yeah, no, I know. Well, I mean, that's fair. But just saying, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean that's that's kind of a stupid strong like it is. Like think about this real quick here, buddy. That is um, <laughs> oh gosh, what's the? It's four mana, but it's three blue and one colorless. What? You know what I'm talking about? Do it, I? It's in modern. A oh, lot. Uh, cryptic. cryptic command. Is that not cryptic command? Counter target spell, draw two cards. No, those are two that's of the effects, better than right? Cryptic. Cryptic's only one card. Is it draw one card? Mm -hmm. Okay. What did you just say? Shut up. <laughs> it's better than cryptic. Cryptic. And how much does this cost? <laughs> I'm just curious. Shut up. I just want to know. You suck. <laughs> I'm just curious. How much is it? We're no. I'm not answering. I'm not playing into does this. Does it cost? I'm not any playing into this. Mana? Uh, technically you have to have two. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So it costs. <laughs> two, but does you have to have two? But then, does it cost two? No, do you're you, annoying. What do you? I don't like you right now. What do you to? You can you leave up two open <laughs> mana? Is that right? Is that right? You tap yes. two, have two mana. Yes. Be better than cryptic command. Yes. Still have two mana to heck. I don't know. Preordain twice. Yeah. Brainstorm. Tw well, twice. Yeah. But like depending on when you do it. But yes. like theoretically. <laughs> is that is that what we're saying? Well, I'd hope it's better because it's two cards, not just one. Mm -hmm. So of course I'd hope it's better. Mm -hmm. So it's fine. It's and it's totally fine. And it's a lot better. Shut up. What it's did you say? Fine. It's fine. Here, do cryptic command and gain two mana. I will say, hold on. I will say yes, it is way better. In all reality, it's way better. All right. I will say there is one small downside to this not as big of a downside in a deck like this because they tailor it to like making this work sure. um, because they've got like cheap threats like Delver and then threats like Gurmag Angler that are yeah. like cool throw things in the graveyard yeah, I need you sold. <laughs> um, yeah exactly uh, generally speaking the downside to that like card combination is that you do have to ditch uh, two cards from your hand to do this one of them sure. having to be an island and most likely the other one I would say like 
probably like 50% of the time it's going to be an island. Yeah. I, I might be wrong on that. Uh, that's 100% a guess, but that's just, you know, what I would think. Sure. Um, and so you have you are kind of like hedging yourself a little bit on the mana end. That's the only downside, and it's not a big downside in this list. Yeah. But it's something to think about. You just have to build around it, obviously, well, which they have. I don't even think you do. I just think you pitch the islands like... I mean, you definitely yeah. do in this deck because you have the angler to just pay off at the end. So exactly. it like doesn't matter. <laughs> but exactly. like, uh, and the they're only running seventeen lands. That's ins- I mean that makes sense. I guess it's a low ground deck. Yeah, um, I'm, cool. I'm cool with that. I think. Yeah, I think that makes a lot sense. of this is card advantage and all that. Anyway. Oh yeah, hundred percent. A lot of things are just free. I mean, days is essentially free. Yeah. Uh, get probe is free. Gush think foil. About- Oh gosh, this this land base. Let's talk about this for a second. This is crispy, delicious, <laughs> sexy time. Uh, we got two Ash Barons, uh, which is I just like, like Ash Baron. land cycling. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. Um, but two <laughs> Eva Wilds and two Terramorphic Expanses, um, which effectively means I'm down four cards because I'm getting islands with these, like always. Yeah, 100%. you've got two swamps and nine islands, but realistically speaking, you've got a six draw chance for swamps. You literally only need one swamp for this deck to work. Yeah, and you're done. So and you're just, good. You're so good. you're if you have the swamp, you always get island. Yeah. I think if you have the angler in hand, you mm-hmm. go for a swamp. But like that's other fair. than that, that's like the only reason. And I guess if you have echoing decay against like a low ground deck, mm-hmm. sure. But like, yeah, most of the time you just get this <laughs> you just is get island. well. I mean, and there's a on Chainer's Edict. You it is a two black flashback. Uh yeah. yeah. Just to make it nicer, two black. Yeah, yeah. You know, but be that as it may. <laughs> you this cuts down so much of your deck. Oh yeah, right. I mean, it's four cards down, not not a ton, but you're also running get probe, so really you're playing with fifty three. And because cards yeah. like what fifty two potentially four five six seven eight nine like ten. Well, okay, gush and days. Yeah, don't have to tap for mana. Nope. Foil does not have to tap for mana. Nope. Gitaxian Probe does not have to tap for mana. Nope. Uh, let me check something. <laughs> Snuff <Snuff-out>. out. <laughs> also, that's what I thought. Does not take mana. So, like, <laughs> yeah, you kind of just don't need lands in this deck. Almost. <laughs> you need, like, two. And you're good. Wow. Now, how about you give a deck that doesn't need mana... <laughs> <laughs> a better cryptic command. <laughs> Shh, it's fine. Um, does it not seem a little fine. bit stupid? Yeah, it does seem stupid. But all right, we harped on that for a little while. We all did that harp to, on that. All that to say, Delver decks are the. I mean, that's my preferred deck. I think in Popper, personally. Honestly, Delver's one of those decks you can kind of play in almost any format, and it's yeah. like okay at the very least. Yeah. Because like Grixis Delver in Modern is fine. It's yeah. not great anymore because there's just better decks, faster decks. Right, but you like, want to play Grixis Death Shadow. Yeah, hundred percent. But a nine nine beats a three two every day. Usually, um, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I mean, Legacy Blue Red Delver, yeah. Vintage. I mean, yeah. Delver's just kind of everywhere. <laughs> yeah, because it's one of the best one drops. Well, I mean, it, it really just goes back to the whole there. The easiest way to win is just swinging it face. Yep. And and then have counterspell backup. Yeah. Way to be there, Delver. There you go. Um, okay, last deck really quick. Uh, we're going to talk about Urza Charm, which is 10% uh, of the meta right now, which is half of all control decks. Uh, mm. There's Demir Control was pretty popular for a while. Worse off Pestilence is one we see a little bit. Yeah, uh, sitting at 3%, which is pretty good. And then Other, sitting at 5%, so that's <laughs> other good. Control. Other yeah, Control. Yeah, that good Other deck. <laughs> Uh, but uh, the Urzatron deck, uh, a lot of you probably know it from Modern. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you know the Modern version, it's much more of like a colorless, Karn liberated, blow crap up, right. amazingness deck. I'm going to wait until I get uh, Karn and Ugin out and then yeah. you lose. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, super powerful deck, one that a lot of Modern players hate. But uh, Big facts. Yeah. Uh, but this version uh, that we see in Popper is much more blue focused. So yeah. it's a little bit controlly, uh, hence it being in the control category. Uh, so we get things like Mole Drifter, Mnemonic Wall, Seagate Oracle, all like controlling draws, controlling cards that you're getting back from your graveyard. There's Denrova Horror, which is a really good uh, bomb for Popper because it just bounces something on the opponent's side of the field and then has them discard a card. Yeah. Real good. Uh, limited all-star also, by the way. Um, and, like, 
the Stonehorn Dignitary is a one of in this list. Uh, it does have one in the sideboard as well, but it's just like, hey, uh, opponent, you don't get a combat step next turn. <laughs> it's yeah. like, cool, got it. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, but it does have things like Condescend, which is particularly good in this deck because it's a scalable counter and you're a Tron deck. So pay into X as much as you want. Yeah, uh, and you it's go. just real good. Um, capsize, crop rotation as a one of to kind of throw in there in case you need to fix out a Tron land. Uh, Electricery, the best card in the game. Um, it is what? Uh, what? What? what is, it's the best card in the game? What? What is? Electricery? Well, that's just factually wrong. <laughs> um, but it does have things like Mystical Teachings. That's why we see a lot of one ofs in these lists because Mystical Teachings just kind of pulls things out. Um, and it's all, I mean, it's just about long-term value is essentially what this deck does. So it's basically just controlling the game and then playing a Dinrova Horror. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Um, but it is, I mean, super powerful. Tron lands in general. What I'm kind of surprised about is we used to see uh, the Ulamog's Crusher, I believe, the 8-8 mm -hmm. with Annihilator. Yeah. That used to be the direction for not only Urza Tron, but like uh, reanimator strategies, things like that, which we don't really see reanimator very much anymore. But um, that used to be the way you go because that was literally the best like beat face popper creature, I think, just period. I don't Probably. really think there was a question. I mean, if you stick Annihilator <laughs> on anything, I'm I'm pretty okay. With it. Yeah, that's pretty with good. It. Uh, yeah. And so, and obviously being able to to ramp it out on like turn four is yeah, stupid. Um, good. <laughs> eight, eight, turn four with yeah, Annihilator. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, Choo. so obviously things have taken a turn and now we are into more controlling uh, decks, but it does still seem good. Pretty awesome. Nothing super exciting, I would say though. Uh, no, not really. There's no like cutesy combo here. No. Um, there doesn't really get, there's not really room for it, I'd say. I like that it's sort of a toolbox deck. I mean, Mystical Teachings decks in general are kind of toolboxy decks because it just pulls out yeah. at instant speed it's, whatever you need yeah, it to. Yeah, I mean, it's what you need. Um, um, They're only a two of, so it just makes me think it's just... Yeah, it's kind of added value. Bonus. But it does yeah. have flashback. You get four activations out of it. I mean... In total. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, pretty straightforward. It's just kind of your average control e Tron mm -hmm. deck, uh, yeah. which is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. We yeah. actually saw control like modern versions of the blue Tron deck at some point we've seen lists like that. Obviously they didn't work as well, uh, but you know, still pretty cool. Um, what are you looking at? Oh, Orzhov Pestilence. Yeah. Yeah, that's a pretty sweet deck. Where does it get the name Pestilence from? Uh, the card Pestilence. <laughs> it's just like a blow everything up kind of card. It's a really sweet card. I love it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, those are the top three decks in Papa right now. Uh, what I will say as a bit of a conclusion uh, is that Papa seems really well fleshed out. Uh, it seems like there are a few decks you play, and that's kind of it. Well, uh, yeah, I don't think fleshed out would really be my... The w I don't think that's what I would say. Here's why. Yeah. Um, it seems really, like, sandbagged in some areas, right? It seems really focused on like yeah. here are five decks that are really good two of which are really really good yeah you know what i mean so i think it needs a little bit of fixing whether that is banning or adding cards you i would add, love that to be an additive issue oh i mean you know what i'm saying sure i okay so hear me i don't want necessarily the foil gush combo to be lost just because it is so cool. It is really cool. Like, it's... Like... Kudos, it's living the dream Kudos to the person who found that. That's really <laughs> yeah, dope. It is. Um, so, I don't want that to necessarily go away. Sure. But I think you can reward players who don't play that combo. Sure. In a way. No, I definitely um, think so. The only way you add cards to Popper is to print them at common or... I mean, I mean that's it. Print them at common... <laughs> Add, you know, <laughs> reprint them in common. Yeah. I was edging towards... <laughs> I was wondering where you were going with I was that. edging towards reprint them at common, but I realized that print them at common is exactly that, too. It's more inclusive, also. Like it's, yeah, it's like make new cards for common and reprint yeah. them at common. But, like, no. honestly, you don't get to add things any other way. Yeah. So um, taking, taking away seems easier. I just don't want them to. I don't like... I you mean... Know? The what if we ban Delver and Popper? Oh. Well, then... 
like what uh, Boris Agro just takes over. Yeah, you have to do something about that deck too, don't you? Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is like a subtractive does it solution work? works, but is like obviously inherently negative because you're taking something away from a format. Why not just print cool cards in common? Will be dope, but you don't want to ruin like other formats. You it's could do like fine. a you could you could do a special set of Popper Masters, bro. There you go, Wizards. Dear I don't wizards. know how you do. How do you do the rare in each pack if they <laughs> make it a foil? Oh, that's fair. Or just make pre like make multiple cards foils or something like yeah, that. Yeah, or you know give I mean? like alternate art. That would be it. Oh, all art popper stuff. Wizards, if you need uh, help in your department for popper. Which is a hundred percent a thing. I know it is. Don't keep that secret away from us. <laughs> uh, we got you. We'll, we'll make it happen. And I'll draw the art. You don't want that. Don't do that. <laughs> no that. <laughs> wow! Shots fired. Um, Sorry. But you're right. Uh, oh, that doesn't count. No, that definitely. So I'm looking around real yeah. quick. I'm looking around at the um, just tournaments. And yeah, Boris Agro has played a lot. It doesn't win a lot. No, dude, check it out. You know, it wins a lot. <laughs> Delver. Correct. <laughs> well, both of the decks, in terms oh, of percentages, are going up. And, burn. And burn. I mean, burn, popper burn is burn. solid, it's just, though. It's just burn. Like. But it gets access to, like, Fire Blast, which is sweet. I love the yeah. card Fire Blast. It's just a fun card. It's Deal great. four damage for basically free. <laughs> sure. Why not? Needle Drop. <laughs> <laughs> I love Needle Drop. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, this is sick. Anyway, yeah, I just want them to, like, diversify a bit. That's what I would love to right. see in the popper format. Over the next, like, year or two, let's get some diversity in there, homie. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. We got some cool decks. I like the decks that are at the top, but let's get some other ones in there. We can have R&D pick a bunch of cards that, like, I'd say you probably don't want many rares. No, probably not. In, in, in popper, because I think... Then it's just, like... Then you're breaching territory of like, is this just gonna become like modern or something? You know. Well, what I mean? it's really like legacy around legacy that point, that depending point, on what yeah. goes in. But I mean, I think you can get away with printing some, like reprinting some creatures. Yeah. That were up there. Yeah. In rarity at Popper. Hundred percent. Like I don't think a lot of them are that good. Like, there's like a Hydra. I'm thinking that I don't think would break the format, but I think it would be a really good play. Mm -hmm. Um, Miscutter Hydra. Oh, I love this guy. Right? right? That's a good card, though. Like, it would be great because it gets pro blue. Well, green Stompy would just become a thing. Again, green Stompy was already a thing. Yeah, but it, honestly, it's not so good that it's... Because it... I mean, you can still remove it. Well, mm -hmm. You have edict effects. I mean, yeah. You all can. over Popper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's a good card, though. <laughs> that's all I'm it's saying. It's a great <laughs> card, but it's that, like that's just a thought, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Plus, are, Tron would get it. Oh crap! No, never mind. I take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah, Tron and Miscutter miss Hydra seems like a bad play. Miscutter turn four for eleven D. Eleven D. But anyway. I mean, how much is it? Seven, right? Is Tron? Yeah, Tron gets seven. The, uh, right. One of each Tron land is seven, like or seven mana. Right. Generic. right. So if you play one of, yeah, yeah, yeah. So turn four, you get a seven-seven pro blue Miscutter Hydra. Chainer's Edict still kills it, though, because you you've not played anything else. I mean, yeah, but <laughs> come on. Turn but four. honestly, doesn't it also have Hexproof? No, it does not. It's just Pro Blue? Yeah, it's just Pro Blue. Are you sure? 100%. Because okay, um, I ran that in uh, a blue-white deck just for fun. That's good, because that'd be dumb. Um, yeah, that would be so broken. It would get, like, 100% if it had Hexproof, it would get way more play. It can't be countered, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, thinking. it can't be countered, that's it. Okay. Really sweet card, though. <clears throat> well done, Theros. You gave us a good card. Just one. <laughs> There's also Polycranos. Wait, yeah, okay. How do you say it? It's technically Polycranos. That's I think. what I say. Yeah. But I hear like a lot of people say it differently. Polycranos? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, um, yeah. Popper, uh, I just want to see diversity. That is all. Yeah. I think. Uh, still I think, fun uh, format. Highly recommend it for anybody. We should. Here's the challenge of the community. If you had to see a Masters Popper set be printed, oh. what would you want? And here's what I think. I think you don't get. I think you can bring uncommons down. Yeah, I mean that's done all the time. I don't. You got like a butt ton in ultimate. I think Masters. mythics are off limits pretty much always. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and like seldom rares. 
But yeah, I think certain rares you could probably get away with. But I think they a lot have of the to ones be from, like, I think a lot of the ones from like Alpha. And, <laughs> yeah. And on. Like the creatures that just don't make any sense. I think Black Lotus. Um, no. All right, boy. Listen. <laughs> no, but definitely there are some rares out there. the The thing about like a rare that's gonna get downshifted is that it to common. Oh god. Um, is that it probably has to be like super, like specific to a certain deck. Yeah. Because it can't really, like, if it hits a wide variety of decks, it's just going to hit every deck, and then we're just going to see that all the time. Well, right. So, like, it has to be, like, a really specific hate card or something like that that we'd see, which is still fine. Um, Papa P is the deck name. It's Popper Ponza. That's sweet. Really douchey for any of you Ponza players. You know who you are. No, I don't. I don't know who they are. I actually would be a Ponza player. Would you? Yeah. How is this a Ponza deck? Do what? How is this a Ponza deck? Uh, it's a blow up land deck. Oh, true that. Um, land destruction, kind of notoriously, is like the worst thing you can do in Magic. <laughs> Not worst as in uh, it's bad to play. Worst as in everybody will hate you for it. Nah, uh, there's other things I hate more than well, yeah. land destruction. Anything specific, Will? <laughs> Storm. <laughs> Storm isn't terrible. Um, but yeah. Anyway, um, Popper is really fun. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me, Popper is really fun. Just Competitive like Popper is kind of touchy right now. A little bit, I'd say. But I don't know. Throw a wrench in. Somebody, one brewer out there, throw a wrench into things. Make yeah, things that's, sweet. That's a challenge. That's the challenge. Bread, water, <laughs> uh, hops, and yeast, baby. I said bread. I meant wheat. <laughs> what is this? Anyway. That's the ingredients for beer, Kevin. Oh, that's good. This is friendly to little kids. Yeah, they beer's friendly. Beer. Kids? <laughs> beer's friendly. Can I ask your parents? Friendly. We shouldn't say things like that. Anyway, guys. We said nothing. I said. <laughs> uh, that's it for Popper. Uh, mm. Normally, we would do a little bit more detail, but there's not a ton that needed detailing. So that's kind of it. Uh, you talk about the most played cards? Real quick. I mean, we can. It's mostly like specific stuff. No, like, you can't you, you jerk? I didn't close it, did I? Yeah, you did. Whoops. Um, nope. Goldfish is what you're looking for. Yeah, I ain't got some. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it is what it is. That's all. Uh, I know like Pyroblast and Hydroblast were like the top two cards. You know what? It doesn't even matter. No, it's what you would expect for the most part. Yeah, Kev, what would you? Delver being in the top. Uh, Gurmag Angler being in the top. All the norm. Um, okay, I'm moving it on. Right. Crack a Pack, sponsored by our good friends over at Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. A great place. Oh, good. Now that you found it. Um, anyway, uh, you we know, are. You'd expect Gorilla Shaman? That's yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like cards, mostly cards that we saw in the deck list that we talked about. So it's like, nah, that's yeah, really you're just making Boros or Blue Black. Yep. All right, cool. Anyway, anyway, uh, we are gonna open these packs. Uh, we do have our little thing going on where whoever gets the most shocklands and allegiance uh, has to donate or do something charitable. We haven't figured that out yet because uh, we're bad at planning. Clearly, by this episode. So, uh, <laughs> just kidding, sort of. Uh, but I do have one shockland to my name. So uh, I have zero because I got. I have two. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I have stomping ground now. Uh, incubation <laughs> Druid. I have one man of any type that a land you control could produce. If Incubation Druid has a plus one plus one counter on it, add three mana of that type instead. Ooh, yeah. I think this is a good card, but I don't want it for... Yeah. You know. Ooh, that's not bad. Um, don't really like that. Uh, yeah, obviously my rare was stomping ground. I do have a Wall of Lost Thoughts uh, at foil, which is interesting, but not super interesting. Did I just say that's interesting but not super interesting? You did. <laughs> cool. Because we are good at saying stuff. I am good at saying stuff. We have so. the best words. <laughs> um, uh. So I don't have a ton of options. My like bombiest bomb in this pack is Sphinx of the New Prav. Flying Vigilance for four, two blue, two white. It's a four, three. A uh, spells your opponent's cast that target Sphinx of the New Prav. Costs two more to cast, which is like, it's decent. Um, I've also got consigned to the pit. Destroy target creature, consign to the pit, deals two damage to that creature's controller. Um, 
I'm probably gonna go with uh, consigned to the pit. Really? In terms of efficiency, it is efficient. It's also. Would, I'm yeah. not afraid of taking gold cards early, but I feel like I'm wedged into two colors with Sphinx. Because uh, it's so aggressive. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little less because it's Ravnica. I'm like a little less. Like, worried sure, about sure, it. sure, 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 um, sure. But and the Sphinx is pretty good. It's fine. I also have a Terramander. That's a good card. It's a, a one one. Great card, but yeah, yeah. It, it probably won't wheel. But I'm no. thinking consign is like, I mean, it's removal and yeah. removal in this set. I feel like it's kind of at a premium. <coughs> not at a premium. Excuse me. It's excuse me. like there's not a ton of good removal. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I think. Speaking of removal, I got get the point. Um, yeah. <laughs> destroy target creature, scry one, instant speed three, a black and a red. Pretty good. Yeah. Uh, definitely really, really efficient. Yeah. Um, I also have a dagger caster, which I kind of dig. Uh, it's a little bit high end for like a red deck, but it's a two, three for four. Here's the battlefield deals one damage to each opponent and each creature your opponent controls. It's like trickery on a stick. It is like trickery on a stick. I kind of dig it. And then my rare is uh, collision colossus, which is fine. Um, it's six damage to target creature with flying. Yeah. Which is good. <clears throat> uh, for only two mana, that's great. Uh, and it also, for two target creature, gets plus four, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. Yeah. I feel like that, honestly, is just really powerful that's, uh, as a combat trick. That's yeah, that insane. can be, like, that's game winning and limited yeah. sometimes, um, you know? So, as much as I like the other two cards, I think I'll go with the rare. Yeah. Uh, Collision Colossus. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Um, yeah. Anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you want to talk about? <sighs> yeah. Should they ban that combo, Kev? Final summation. Uh, foil and Gush? Yeah. Should they ban it out? And if so, mm. which one of the ban? Good question. Um, they probably ban Gush, I would say. Because Gush is just kind of stupid on its own. <laughs> I mean, Foil is too, but it is just a counter spell. Well, here's my thing. If they won, I think they should ban it, unfortunately. As much as I don't want that, I yeah. think it, it would be better for the format. One, so yes. Excuse me. Two, I don't know that Foil gets played if Gush isn't played. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, because mm. on the onset, you're just. Well, either but Days is still a thing. Sure, but you don't have to discard, like, anything but, other than an island. Oh, well, no. Yeah. I mean, you return an island to your hand for days. Right, just Which one gives island. you. Right, but you're going to have. I mean, presumably you'll have other cards in your hand because it is a control well, deck at is heart. Not, is Days not. Wait a minute. Don't I know what Days is? Days. You just return an island rather than paying the cost, right? Right, which gives you the oh, island Days you need is also for foil. Banned, apparently. What? Oh, uh, <laughs> which gives you the one land plus you probably have another card for foil that you need to discard. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm still, I'm, I'm still with it. Um, no, no. I think Days is fine, and that's not like like that I think bad. you could still play foil. It's going to be less consistent, but like you could still play it. Is well, how I feel about it. But then, do you want to like? You're returning an island to counter something with days, and then also discarding an island to counter something with foil. Well, you're able to like, yeah, honestly, because you're, you're able to like. But you can't counter. Why would you counter two spells? Well, if the two spells are good, why wouldn't you counter two spells? But they're never gonna play two spells at once. Like, why wouldn't they? But like, at what point are they gonna realistically? Well, it depends what deck. I mean, Boros Aggro, everything costs nothing. So like. I mean, not but like nothing, what's but gonna like, happen? Well, but like everything is a creature, so they're gonna. You can't play two creatures at once. You know what I'm saying? Well, you play one. Well, I guess and then counter have it, it to use the other. and then have it to use the other. Yeah, counter. but Days isn't even that good of a counter, really. Uh, no, but I mean, it actually in Popper in Plus, particular. Plus, you have to use okay. this one first. Yeah. So like, if you could use, okay, so if you I use, just want foil to be good. Here's what I'm saying: <laughs> if you use Days first. Yeah, they've got open mana just to pay the one, and days doesn't matter. Right, but now you're set up for foil. <laughs> right, but now they probably can't play anything else because they just paid their other one. I don't know. I'm trying to make this work well. I understand. It's just, not. It's just look, gush makes it. But if you ban out foil, you <laughs> still get to play gush. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. But if you ban gush, I don't think you play foil really ever. So what do you think they ban? I think they should ban foil because so then you you only ban one card and one card still really not really good still playable. Yeah, you know what I mean. I think it is. I really think good. if you ban gush, it's like banning two cards in a way. 
Uh, yeah, that's pretty close. Because I the guess. day's day's foil doesn't work for me because it's it's not synergistic. It's the <clears> same <throat> effect. It's just like I'm doing this thing once and then making the second one free, sort of. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean I get it. Which should be fine for literally any other effect in Magic, but not counters. Yeah, that's fair. If it was burned, cool. <laughs> cool. Like lightning bolt. Cool. Totally cool. Discard mountain, bolt again. <clears throat> cool. Cool. But like this is reliant like on, the, on yeah. the opponent doing something worth no, that's using fair. an effect for. That's you know fair. what I mean? No, I get it. No, and I think you're right. I, I don't know though. Um, I don't know. I just. I think the deck still functions basically the same way if you ban only right. foil, right? Which and it we know that it does because it was already a deck. <laughs> just to clarify, um, but is that going to hurt the deck enough to make it not like the top deck? It's going to be not as good, <laughs> certainly. I mean, it'll certainly be less good, but is it still going to be the not maybe not the best deck, but like very close to? Well, I mean, are you saying? Just because it's a really strong deck, like this wouldn't. No, but I don't think I that don't... shakes up the format enough, because the deck is still going to be. Well, that's not a reason not to do it though. No, but like, it doesn't seem like it does enough if you ban foil, but it seems like it does too much if you ban gush. That's kind of where I'm at. Okay, yeah, I'm cool. Do you with see that. what I'm saying? I'm cool with that. Because like, it kind of it doesn't nerf the deck by any means by banning gush, but it does take out two very good cards for the deck. Whereas foil is like a good card for the deck, but it's not backbreaking not to have it, obviously, because it was already a thing. So well, neither like, card's backbreaking. Brack baking? Yeah, that's what I said. Okay. I don't know. What I'm um, gotta bake those bracks. Uh, the brack baking <laughs> slasher. The slash ringing. The slash <laughs> swinging. Um, I think gush is m pretty big for that deck uh, because it's such an efficient draw spell. I mean, sure, but again... And, like, that's what that deck needs is just draw spells. Well, it's got a bunch of other ones. It does, but none that are quite as efficient, I would say. I mean, yes, Get Probe is free, but it's only replacing itself. Sure. I don't think it's backbreaking. You have uh -huh. other options. Like, why not use... Um, think twice. Yeah. Which is way worse. Two mana draw a card. And then flash it back for two mana. <laughs> uh, so? I'm just saying, like, I think Gush that is a would pretty be, important part. That would be a great compromise. Here, have Delver and Gromag Angler. <laughs> think twice, also, <laughs> and not Gush. So, like, are you saying that the strongest part of this deck is this combo? No, no, no. Well, then I'm you can ban Gush and you'll be okay, I think. I don't know. I think it's a key card. I don't think it's, like... The, it just, the here's, here's key the, of this deck is that it draws cards and plays efficient threats. Yeah. Gush is, I would argue, it, probably the best draw spell. But can it still do that? It can, it can but it's not going to do it. Just a little worse. It, I think significantly worse. So the best card has, the best deck has to do what it does a little bit worse. No, I'm, that might be fine. I'm just saying Gush is a very, I think, key card to the deck. Yeah. I mean, Sure. I think without it, it's still a fine deck, though. It's an okay deck. I think it's a fine deck. It's a good deck. deck. But it's not, it's not nearly as it's good. It's not broken and unfair. You're right. Yeah, and I don't... I want it to be broken and unfair. No, I'm just kidding. So just want ban foil. And make it... Make it broken, but not unfair. I maintain if you ban foil, it probably doesn't do enough to nerf the deck. But if you, but ban, if you gush, ban gush, it does, it too does much? a little bit too much. Disagree. That's fine. You have other options. You just play this because it's the best. Yeah, and it's... Like... For this deck, that's what you need. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I bet they just put in like some counters and think twice. I mean, yeah, they're just, like condescend if they, and think twice would make sense to me. In a world where they ban gush, foil probably does not get played. Right. So you're right. They would just play something like think twice or yeah. something like that, and it would be fine. I'm just saying. Yeah, modern doesn't get this, and it's a good deck. It's not nearly as good anymore, though. I mean, no. Like, but it's still competitive. It doesn't. Uh, it's pretty competitive. <laughs> it's not. If you're playing Grixis, we said it. You play Death Shadow. You don't leave. Delver but does not that, see much play in but modern Delver anymore. Delver decks are still like they're not. They're <laughs> not. Look, they're not good. But did they not have their day? They did. That's what I'm saying. Is they were still fine and they didn't get gush. I am looking for 
What? My point was they were good, <laughs> Kevin. They were good. And, and they're they not anymore. And they didn't have Gush. Yeah. So but they had modern go. legal cards, which were way better than a lot of the cards that get played in the popper list. Yeah, it kind of helps my point, I think, a little bit. I don't know that it does. Um, I think it does. I just want to punch you right now. Um, I'm just kidding. I don't even, in all seriousness, I don't even see Delver on no, here. No, Delver doesn't, like... <laughs> I'm a little surprised I just don't see it. I think, if anything, it'd, be bl- it'd have to be blue-red. Yeah. Probably. I think 100%. In my mind. And it would be what, like... Well, we have uh, blue-red aggro. Let's, no, it's but it's Phoenix, Phoenix, right? It's yeah. All, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't even see Delver anymore. Dang. I mean, yeah. I mean, it makes sense, but it's just kind of... Right. But... What's rug aggro? Again... What is Rogue Aggro? I don't know. Again, my Floating. whole point was Delver decks will always be competitive. <laughs> There's one. <laughs> nope, still no Delver. <laughs> they are always going to be fine. Yeah. Because they're just really efficient, and that's their thing. Yeah. You make them a little less efficient, and that's just better for everybody else. Sometimes, but I think the problem in always this case... Always better for everybody Well, else. the problem in this case is that Boros Aggro is already on top. If you nerf... But it's the not Delver though. Deck. It like it's played it's a lot. It's twenty two percent. It's played a lot. How many of those did it win, Kev? Okay, I get that. Like, but two like out assuming of 20. you take the Delver deck down even just a little bit, the Boris Agro deck's gonna run it over. But Orzhov Pestilence still like beat it out in a lot of tournaments. Yeah, but the Pestilence deck isn't seeing much play. So? I don't so. mean it ain't good. Is it not seeing <laughs> a lot of play because the Delver deck is do good? I don't know. It I won, don't care. It won like eighty no, percent of the tournaments. <laughs> the Delver deck won like so much of the tournaments. Stop being right. It's annoying. I'm just using the numbers in front of you, Kev. Just because you don't want to see. I them. don't know how to read numbers. There it is, folks. We do a podcast about magic, <laughs> and one of us don't know how to read numbers. All right, this is really off topic, but Jeskai Ascendancy still got a little bit of. It got one deck this year. This deck is sweet. This, this is isn't totally even popper. No, mo- no, I just love this deck. I was thinking about it the other day. That's the. I'm also distracting you. Oh. Um, no, this deck is just sweet. That's all. Just admit they should ban the combo. They should probably ban the combo. They should just ban foil, or gush, or both. Yes, right. maybe. Why the heck? Anyway, I'm getting off topic, guys. Manamorphos is 22. Yeah, it's played in um, it's a Drake's right now, I think. Oh, yeah, you're right. Which is super popular. Glaring Wish. This deck was fun, I just want to point out. Just Guy Ascendancy. Kev, did we do our Cracker Pack? We did. Yeah, All we right. did. We're just rambling at this point. You guys probably aren't listening. It's fine. Hi. Kev. <laughs> Can Kev. we end this episode? <laughs> is that what I'm Give us the to? outro, Kev. Guys, thanks for watching this episode of It Resolves. It was a good one. Uh, well, hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> My name is Kevin. My name is Will. (laughs) This has been It Resolves. What does MSRP even mean, though, honestly?